What's up, everybody, and welcome to One Take. I'm Gil. I'm the one. And today we're talking about Attack on Titan Season 3, Episode 21, which is also known as Episode 58 of the series. This is going to be a full recap and review, so it's going to be full of spoilers. So if you haven't watched the episode yet, check it out and then come back and watch this review. I should also note, I don't read the manga. Alon, you don't, uh, you still don't read the manga, right? Still don't read the manga. All right. <laughs> so there won't be any spoilers from the manga or future episodes of the series. But with that, let's jump right into it. The episode opens up back in flashback mode. We've been seeing Grisha, Aaron's father in his past, sort of learning his origin story. Uh, where we see him now is with the owl in Titan form, uh, basically killing all of the guards, throwing, it, throwing them into the sea, and then we hear Grisha's narration. So this is from his memoirs that Aaron and the others recently found. And in his memoirs, Grisha says, I suppose I should explain what the sea is. And then Alun, in, uh, in episode, we've had several episodes now full of revelations, is finally revealed what the sea actually is. It is a body of water that covers 70% of the Earth's <laughs> surface. <laughs> yeah, that was shocking. I know. It's 70%. It's un unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then Owl frees Grisha, and he reveals his real name, Aaron Kruger. It's the same name as another major character in the series. The main Aaron character. Aaron Yeager. <laughs> Aaron Yeager. <laughs> uh, so Grisha asks Owl, why did you save only me? Why didn't you save Dina, you know, my wife, who's also uh, part of the royal bloodline? And Owl doesn't exactly answer. Just to quickly recap, uh, so th Grisha was being held prisoner on top of the wall uh, on the island where Aaron and the rest of everybody we know uh, lives. Uh, all of Grisha's friends were injected with a serum, pushed over the wall, and turned into titans. And at the last second before Grisha was turned into a titan, uh, the owl turned into a titan, killed all the guards, and saved Grisha. So Grisha's wondering, why did you save me? Why didn't you save anyone else? And Owl doesn't exactly directly answer his question. What, what the Owl does, what Aaron does, is explain his backstory. He explains that his parents were part of the revolution, and he watched his parents get burned alive, which rightfully pissed him off. And then he went on to pretend to be one of the Marleyans. And as a spy, he had to kill many of his fellow Patriots. He had to cut off a lot of people's fingers. That's kind of their means of torture. But he doesn't really say why he didn't. Why? So here's a question for you, Lun. Why didn't the owl transform into a titan five minutes earlier? He could have saved Grisha, Dina, and everybody else in that wall. But for some reason, he waited until the last second. And the only person he saved is Grisha. I don't know. <laughs> I, th I thought about it. The theory I have is that so after the owl explains his backstory, he tells Grisha that he's going to entrust him with the final task, which is to take the owl's titan power and then go and retrieve the founding titan's power. So I think that the owl realizes this is a dangerous plan. He doesn't want anyone to know about it. So it was sort of a sacrifice where he had to wait. He knew he was going to entrust Grisha with this mission. So he had to wait to the last second once everybody else was taken out, turned into Titans. So Grisha would be the only person who knows the plan. I, I think that's what it comes down to. But he doesn't explicitly say it. He will go on to say a couple things which sheds some light on it. Uh, but then another important piece of information is shared. Grisha asks the owl, well, why don't you do it yourself? You know, why don't you just use your titan power to go get the founding titan? And do you remember what the owl's answer is? Because he's about to be dead. That's right. He explains that when you inherit the power of the titan, you die 13 years later. Mm -hmm. And Alon, how long 
because the owl had his power. Uh, what was it? Twelve years? About thirteen years. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so he's he's on the brink of death. And uh, I should also say, so he uh, Grisha's final task is to go get the power of the founding titan. And it's easy to forget what is what is so special about the founding titan. It's actually something that we learned about in part one of season three. Uh, the founding titan can scream and control other titans. In addition to that, the Founding Titan can use that scream to erase people's memories. That's why everybody in the walls believes that they're the only part of humanity left. They don't remember anything outside the walls because uh, the, the king, using the power of the Founding Titan, chose to erase everyone's memory. So that's why the Founding Titan is so important. Well, so from there, we cut back to present day. Aaron's in a prison cell telling Armin what he's remembering from these flashbacks. So he tells Armin that they have now both Aaron and Armin have what's called the curse of Ymir, which is what what you uh, call the fact that you die after 13 years when you have the power of the Titan. So that means Armin's got 13 years left and Aaron's got less than eight years. Has any, hasn't he had the power for, he's had it for five years now? So he's had it for about five years. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, uh, I know you and I both reacted when Aaron mentions his age <laughs> here. He's 15 years old. Yeah, I, I could have, I, I really thought he was like 19, 20 now at this point. Yeah, because he starts out, he's really young. And over time, they've kind of flashed forward. And I, yeah, th this show has a weird thing with age. Where Aaron's younger than you expect, and the, the creators of the show have said, <laughs> uh, "Yeah, Levi, he's older than you think." <laughs> so, I mean, I think he's probably around thirty. Yeah, I Maybe would say the same. I, yeah, originally I probably thought mid to upper twenties, but after that comment, it made me think he's at least thirty. How, how old <laughs> is our uh, oldest brother? He just turned thirty-five. So I was gonna say that Levi. To me, if I look at his face, he kind of reminds me of uh, our <laughs> older brother. So I'd put him right around 35. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's more athletic than our older brother, though. That's true. That's true. <laughs> he runs a lot, but if you strap some ODM gear on his back, I don't know how well he'd do. <laughs> <laughs> huh. So uh, Mikasa has an interesting reaction when she hears Armin and Aaron discussing the fact that they've essentially been diagnosed with a terminal illness called the Curse of Ymir. Mikasa says in a very emotionless uh, way, just says, you're wrong. This has to be a mistake. It's wrong. Uh, and, and no one really reacts to that too much. Aaron just goes on and says, if I die uh, before or if one of us dies before passing on the power of the Titan, that power doesn't go away. It will just transfer to another subject of Ymir yet to be born. So a random baby will be born and inherit the power. And he comments, it's as if we're all connected by something we can't see. All the subjects of Ymir. Uh, so how, how did you think of, of, of the way Aaron, Armin, and Mikasa took this news? So Armin and Aaron both just learned they have a guaranteed death sentence. 13 years for Armin, less than 8 years for Aaron. Mikasa just learned that her best friend Armin and her brother got a death sentence. Well, I'll say with Aaron and Armin's reactions, they they both should already be dead. Aaron was eaten and way back in was that season one or two? Uh season one. Early so in season, season one. one, Aaron was eaten by a Titan and then we survived because he discovered his Titan powers. And Armin uh couple episodes ago sacrificed himself burned alive got his skin burnt off miraculously <laughs> survived that um so i think that they both kind of already accepted their fates they they understand they have a responsibility now to you know uh maybe pass this on Right. before they die. I think a lot's going through their heads, but I think they're both being pretty 
mature about the situation. Mm-hmm. And then Mikasa doesn't want to face reality. She, I mean, it's kind of a ridiculous. I mean, the whole the whole concept is <laughs> kind of ridiculous. <laughs> These titan. Yeah. Well, what's a titan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I guess considering that there are things called titans in this world, and the Wait, fact I just want that to point a titan out, would die after 13 years isn't that ridiculous. I just want to point out, Alun's watched 58 episodes of the series, and he goes, what's a titan? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't mean it like that. I know. That. I know. It's just like, <laughs> we're talking about such a ridiculous concept, and right, we're, right. we're like, and then Mikasa is like, doesn't want to accept that a titan has 13 years to live. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think Mikasa is uh, sort of shell shocked uh, because if you so w- one thing about Mikasa is that she feels a little bit to me like an underdeveloped character in the sense that she's very one note. Everything she's done has been about protecting Eren. And on another show, you might look at that that and say she's underwritten, she's underdeveloped, she's very one note. But I think that's actually saying something about her character. Uh, she watched her mother get killed, and her mother's dying words were to protect Aaron. And I think that she was always protective of him, and that solidified it as something that she that's become her life's purpose. And now she's faced with. Uh, seeing Aaron's going to die and she can't protect him from it. So I think she's sort of watching her purpose be stripped away from her and she can't really process it besides saying that can't be right. You know, you're wrong. So I think, I think you're right on Aaron and Armin. I think when you, if you listen to interviews of people from from the military in real in real life, they'll say that when you see people die, when you have a near death experience, it totally changes your whole perception of death. Uh, I think Aaron and Armin have gone through that. They have higher purposes to their life. I don't think they're going to take it too hard that they just received a death sentence. They shouldn't even be alive, like you said. But I think this. I think Mikasa is taking this and will take it harder than the two of them have. Yeah. Did you say Mikasa's mom told her to protect Aaron? Didn't she? Or am I forget? Am I misremembering? You mean Aaron's mom? Oh, Mika- that's right. Mik- it's yeah. Mikasa's adopted mother. I exactly. forgot. Well, and that's another reason why she's co- so committed to Aaron. Because Aaron's the one that saved her life. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And now she cannot return the favor. Because how, how, how is Mikasa going to break the curse of Ymir? Maybe she'll find a way. She might. She might. Uh, And also one other thing that when Aaron made the comment about how they're all connected by something we can't see, it it made me think about the supernatural element. And I thought about how a lot of the explanations we're getting, there's a mix of the supernatural and science. So where did the power of the Titans come from? Essentially, they say somebody went to the devil and asked for it. Right, The devil of all earth, I think they said. But how do you transform someone into a Titan? You inject them with Titan spinal fluid. I'm curious if you if you have any reaction to, I mean, do you prefer a scientific explanation? Do you like the fact that it's kind of ambiguous? It's a little sciencey, a little supernatural. You, you could even make the assumption that that it's all science and the supernatural stuff is just unexplained and it's all kind of clouded by legend. Within this, the Attack on Titan universe, I would prefer a scientific explanation, even if there are these supernatural stories amongst the people. Mm-hmm. But I think ultimately, I, I would like there to be a scientific reason behind mm-hmm. all of it. Yeah, and How I think you? Uh, I, I think what we're gonna get, and and I think I'm okay with it, is they'll probably explain some of it through science, as they have been. And I think a portion of it will be left ambiguous. I don't think they'll ever outright say there's something supernatural. But they'll say, you know, everyone's connected by something we can't see. And we can kind of fill in the blanks and say, okay, there could be a sciencey explanation for that. We're not going to get it. And there might be legends that say the devil gave us this power. In reality, we just don't know where it came from. And uh, I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm, I'm so far okay with the ratio of... Uh, science explanation to you know ambiguous potentially supernatural well we go back to flashback mode 
Grish and Grisha and Al are talking. And uh, they, they, there's a lot that's said here, but a few important pieces of information that come out of it. Um, the, uh, the owl recounts how one inheritor, that means somebody at some point who received the power of the Titan, says that they actually saw kind of green streaks of light in the sky all intersecting at one point, which we surmise is the point where the founding Titan resides. So Aaron talks about how we're all connected, and it seems like in certain circumstances, you can actually witness that connection. Uh, the Owl also talks about how uh, you know Ymir, the, the founder of this whole Titan civilization, um, some people saw her as having made a deal with the devil. Some people saw her, you know, the uh, Marleyan saw her as a devil, but we, the subjects of Ymir, saw her as a god or somebody that was close to the gods. And he basically says the only truth in this world is that there is no truth. Anyone can become a god or a devil. All it takes is for people to believe it. And I wanted to point that out because I think that is one of the key themes of the show, or it's become a key theme over the last couple of seasons, which is that, in a way, we all become slaves of the past. We have these two civilizations that for thousands of years have been warring with each other, and they continue to fight to this day really only because of tradition. I mean, who cares who started it? Let's all just stop, you know, stop fighting. You know, there's all kinds of real world parallels to that where you have nations that fight. And if you ask why, there's no real reason for them to be in conflict today, but they fought for thousands of years, so they continue to fight. And I think the owl is sort of explicitly saying that here. From there, we get a little more of a window into why the owl took the approach he did. Why did he let so many people get turned into Titans? Specifically, why did he let Dina, Grisha's wife, and uh, a member of the royal bloodline. Why did he allow her to get turned into a titan? And he basically said he did that because he couldn't allow the enemies, the Marleans, to get a hold of her. So that gives us a little bit more of a hint into why he let all that happen. Uh, and then Grisha says that he doesn't think he can do it. Uh, so basically, the owl is about to die. It's been 13 years. And he is tasking Grisha with, okay, Grisha. You've got to turn into a titan, then you've got to eat me to take my power, and then you've got to go find whoever has the founding titan, and then you've got to eat them. <laughs> and, he, and he says he doesn't think he can do it. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, he looks down at his bloody hands where he's had his fingers removed, and while, while he's looking at them, he says, if I had known this was the price of freedom, I would not have paid it. Now, do you think that when he says the price of freedom, he means his fingers? <laughs> or, or does he mean like the whole thing? Uh, maybe he means his wife. <laughs> yeah, that might be <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, so uh, of course he didn't mean uh, just his fingers. He meant his <laughs> wife. He meant all the violence, all the cruelty that he's going to have to be a part of. He doesn't want to do it. Yeah. So um, the owl has to convince Grisha to do it. And the, and the way he does that is he tries to rekindle the anger he saw in Grisha way back when. When Grisha lost his sister because the Marleans cruelly you know, fed her to dogs, uh, when he saw his, his parents you know, have to basically tell the lie that you know, they're these horrible people and the Marleans are great, he wanted to, the owl wants to rekindle that anger in Grisha. So he tells him, Stand. Fight for the sake of restoring freedom and dignity to Eldia. Stand. And Grisha says, I can't. And then the owl goes on, look, I brought this from your home. And he holds up the portrait, right, the photograph of Grisha with his family. And then Grisha says, I can't look. So the owl goes on. He says, you can't look, can't stand, can't fight. <laughs> and then do you remember what he says? Uh... Have you no balls? Yeah. <laughs> Did Marley castrate you? So he, <laughs> he just keeps trying to poke and prod at him. Eventually, he gets him to look at the photo. And, and that gets him to stand up. And without saying it, you can tell Grisha's accepted his fate. He needs 
to go do this. And then the owl gives us another revelation. He tells Grisha, there are names given to each of the nine titans. That includes the titan you will inherit. No matter which era this titan has, been found, has found itself in, it has pushed ever forward, seeking out freedom. For the sake of freedom, it fights. Its name, and then we cut to Aaron in the present day, and he says, what does he say? The Attack Titan. That's right. And before we uh, keep going with the Aaron, the Aaron storyline there, to me, this scene felt like we're basically closing out uh, the flashbacks for Grisha. I don't know how many more flashbacks we'll see. And the reason I say that is because from this point forward, we sort of know what happens. If you think back to Season 3, Part 1, we saw that Grisha found the person who had the founding titan, and he did defeat them. So Grisha inherited the power of the founding titan in addition to the power of the attack titan. We saw that Grisha went on to turn his own son, Aaron, into a titan, who then swallowed Grisha. So Aaron now has the power of the attack titan and the founding titan. So we kind of know what happens next. We may have forgotten it, and I had to do some research to, <laughs> to remember. But we, we know what happens next. So I think that we've kind of closed out the Grisha flashbacks. And having said that, how do you feel about them overall? Last week, I sort of felt like we were rushing through it. It seemed like there was a lot of really interesting storyline. And personally, I would not have minded four or five episodes just slowly telling the story of, of Grisha and his uprising. Um, I mean, I think two episodes was actually all right. Um, maybe there will be an OVA that goes into more depth. I doubt it. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think this was enough, but I wouldn't have minded a few more episodes. Yeah, I think that's fair. I guess the, the truth of it is, if you're really interested in progressing the plot, they showed us only what we needed to see. Any yeah. more than that is just because I want to see it. I mean, the, the, the show is not about his father. It's about him and the people in his circle. Right. So I don't know if it would make sense to spend half a season on yeah, that's true. his dad's story. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I, I guess I would have been annoyed if it was all flashback and then the season ended and I had to wait yeah. however long until season four. Well, but you're right. It's, it's perfect for an OVA. So, creators of Attack on Titan, uh -huh. if, if word gets to you, would not mind a Grisha OVA. Same level of quality as the uh, Levi, Levi OVA. Yeah. Not the cooking contest one. No, no. <laughs> Just enjoyable. You know, it was, sure. all, it was all right, but definitely not I, the best. I wouldn't mind a second season of uh, Junior High no. Attack on Titan. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, I, gotta, I have to go back and watch that. I've, I haven't watched that season. I've, I've only watched one or two episodes of that. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, another question, though. How, how do you feel about using uh, this, uh, this whole memory thing as a plot device? Um, it actually it reminded me of, uh, of another show, Game of Thrones, mm. where without getting too spoilery, they also had a character who was able to sort of unlock memories, and that actually revealed things not just to us, but revealed things to characters on the show. Well, it seems like there's more of a purpose to it in in Attack on Titan. Yeah. <laughs> I I trust the creators of this show with that mechanic. Yeah, and and and, and the mechanic has been used for more than just revealing memories. I feel mm -hmm. like it's been it's been interwoven throughout the plot. Uh, I mean, the whole origin of their civilization is that the king used the power of the Titans to erase their memories. So memories have been an important theme. They've been. To, to me, it didn't feel like a cheap plot device. Right. So, yeah, I think they're doing it well here. Um, so back to Aaron. This was uh, Hanj has always been a uh, source of humor on this show. <laughs> and and uh, she, I cracked up in this scene where Aaron, so he's remembering all this. And he says to himself, the attack titan. And then Hanj goes, what are you doing? The attack titan. Did you just do that? Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah. And uh, Levi, um, Armin, and the others try to cover for Aaron, 
by convincing Hanj that this is just a phase he's going through. He's only 15, <laughs> and you know, everyone at that age, they just randomly yell things. <laughs> but, <laughs> And she, she doesn't let it go, though. I mean, there's a few back and forth. She's like, what are you talking about? What phase? It's a, it just it, it was a great moment of levity uh, in the midst of a lot of darkness and a lot of um, pretty horrible things happening. Mm -hmm. uh, then we get a little bit more Mikasa. Uh, so they're all let out of their cells. Basically, Levi gives them the news that they're supposed to be locked up for 10 more days. They're locked in there for insubordination when they were arguing to save Armin instead of Erwin, but they basically said, like, there's no reason to keep you locked up anymore, so they let them go. Mikasa walks out looking like a zombie. I mean, she doesn't look good. Uh, she looks totally just out of it. Her hair looked a little more combed. That's true. Her hair is starting to reshape into its original <laughs> form. <laughs> Aaron asks her, did you lose some weight? We had plenty to eat, though. And Mikasa says, you seem good. <laughs> <laughs> so they want us to know that she's not eating even though she was able to so you assume that she's going through some kind of a depression and uh, you know i think it's all linked to what i was saying before which is that she just had the rug pulled out from under her her, her purpose has been to protect aaron she can no longer do that uh, my hope for her is that having lost that purpose or realizing that cannot be her sole focus. Maybe she'll start to find some other ways to fulfill herself. Maybe she'll start to develop further as a character and be a little bit more selfish. Maybe she's out to do more than only protect Aaron. But we'll see. Uh, from there, Hanj and Jean deliver a letter, a letter to Historia from Ymir. And it's, uh, it's basically a love letter. If you remember, Ymir was the titan who took a liking to Historia, protected Historia. And uh, there's really nothing to the letter except uh, Ymir saying she's going to die soon, presumably because she's hitting her 13-year time limit. And her one regret in life is that her and Historia didn't marry. So uh, then Historia touches the letter and you see a kind of lightning bolt, and it appears to trigger some flashbacks for Historia. It seems like some memories were transferred from Ymir to Historia because we see Ymir as a human getting turned into a titan. And then we see her, having lived as a titan for a while, turning back into a human after eating another titan, so she becomes an intelligent titan. But anyway, the important thing is, Ymir becomes human, and she sees the lights in the sky. She sees the, the connections that intersect at the point of the founding titan. The, the Historia reacts to that. Hanj and Jean ask her, you know, what, what, what just happened? She says, oh, it was nothing. They ask her if there was any kind of coded message in that letter, and she says no. Uh, so I'll say I'm not really sure, actually, the point of that letter. Uh, it could have been, you could have read it as it's, it's drawing closure to that storyline. We had the romance between Historia and Ymir. This kind of closes it out. Well, it seemed more of a one-way romance. That's true. <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of hard to tell because Historia was always a strange character. She didn't show a lot of emotion. Um, she was obviously had an extremely traumatic childhood. Uh, if you remember one specific moment where she'd never had physical contact with her mother. Yeah. And at one point she tried to hug her mom and her mom like <laughs> beats her. Yeah. But Ymir was happy because, or um, Historia was happy because she actually made contact yeah. with her mom. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, definitely was clear Ymir was, uh, was interested in Historia. I, I always read it as, as uh, Historia felt s the same way. But it's kind of hard for her to show it, and it's hard to read her as a character. Yeah, I thought yeah. she felt friendship toward Ymir, and gotcha. Ymir felt romance toward Historia. Historia may have also been thrown off uh, when she found out Ymir was a titan. Yeah, and not a very attractive <laughs> I was titan. I going to say, the, <laughs> the weirdest looking titan. If you read um, on the, uh, the, the Wikipedia for the anime, which, by the way, pro tip I just learned... If you go on the Wikipedia for the anime, it's all written 
only containing knowledge you can get from the anime. So there's no manga spoilers. Hmm. You still have to be careful when you search because some Google suggestions will come up, which may be spoilers. <laughs> so let me, so listeners or uh, viewers, let me take the bullet for you. I will go out on the web and research this and protect you from spoilers. <laughs> um, from there, Sasha eats an apple. We see that for about two seconds. Uh, I guess I just wanted us to know she's okay. She's still eating. <laughs> she's, got, she's getting her appetite back. <laughs> so a small group convenes uh, with Historia, the queen, present, uh, in a room full of people to discuss Grisha's memoirs and basically debrief on what they learned from Grisha's books. Hanj kind of recaps it for us. She explains that our true enemy in this world is the world. Basically, the rest of the world wants all of us dead because we are subjects of Ymir, and they're afraid that at some point we may reign over the world, become titans again, and because of that, they want us all dead. Um, from there, we go back into flashback mode. Uh, Owl explains to Grisha that if Marley gets the founding titan, the Eldians are done for. Grisha says the king would never let that happen. But then the Owl says that's not true because the king refuses to fight. The king said, hey, if you attack us, we're going to destroy everything. But he just said that to kind of get people to back off. In reality, what he said to his own community is, if once again Eldia is driven to sin, we will perish as it's meant to be. I have made a vow renouncing war with the founding titan. And there's, uh, so, and there's also a nuance here. So... One thing we learned back in part one of season three is, so, so we said earlier that if you gain the power of the founding Titan, you can erase people's memories. You can control other Titans. Mm -hmm. But you can only do that if you are part of the royal bloodline. And the problem is, if you inherit the power of the founding Titan, you also inherit the king's promise not to go to war. So you could say, all right, I'm going to get the power of the Founding Titan and defeat the Marlians. But as soon as you get the power, you're like, eh, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, Hanj explains all that. And then she also explains that Grisha went on, as we know, to successfully get the Founding Titan power. She explains that he gave that power to Aaron. She explains that Aaron can't use that power because he's not part of the royal bloodline. Except, if you remember, a little while back, <laughs> we saw Aaron use the power. He screamed right. and controlled the Titans. So Hanj says, maybe Aaron can use it. And that triggers a flashback for Aaron. He remembers that when he used that power, he was making physical contact with the Titan <laughs> that killed his mom. <laughs> and then he makes the connection that that Titan was Dina, Grisha's yep. wife, who is part of the royal bloodline. <laughs> so he surmises that... I feel like you need a whiteboard. I know. It took me... <laughs> I'll tell you, I watched this episode three times. <laughs> it's a long story short. Aaron has the power of the founding Titan. He can't use that power. But he thinks maybe he can use that power... If he's making physical contact with a, a person of royal descent in Titan form. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he doesn't want to reveal that. Because if he does, he's afraid the military might experiment on Historia. They might mm -hmm. try and turn her into a Titan so Aaron can touch her. And then use the power. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't she control the military now? Well, not exactly. She's kind of the queen only in name. Mm -hmm. um, uh, ironically, <laughs> uh, because she has a good story. <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to uh, say what that's a reference to because it's a spoiler, but, but you know what it is. 
if you recognize it. <laughs> uh, so if we, we go back into flashback mode here, um, and this is the end of the episode. Owl and Grisha are talking again, and the owl tells Grisha, after you enter the walls, build a family. Grisha says, what are you talking about? I have Dina. Won't I forget the things you tell me just before I become a Titan anyways? The owl says, that's not always the case. And someone may see it later. Your wife, your child, your neighbors, if need be. Love someone inside the walls. If you can't do that, it'll only repeat. The same history, the same mistakes over and over. And then ready, Alun. This is the mic drop moment. The owl says, to save Mikasa, Armin, and everyone else, you mm. must see it through. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. Grisha says, Mikasa, Armin, who is that? <laughs> and then the owl suddenly gets this look on his face like, who knows? I'm not sure. <laughs> Whose memories are those? <laughs> and, then, yep. and then the episode ends. Yeah. So, <laughs> Alun, what the hell just happened? Well... I'm going to just theorize a little bit. Maybe there's some weird thing with time and memories where you can, if you're a Titan, maybe you also inherit the future memories of people that inherit your Titan ability after you. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> which it's the only logical explanation. Which would also... You know what? I'm going to stop spoiling other spoiling. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stop I, spoiling other shows. <laughs> I was also thinking about that show. <laughs> uh, so I thought the same thing at first. And uh, I'm also going to point out that you and I have always talked about how cool it would be if there was a show with flashbacks where eventually the flashbacks suddenly reference something in the present day. And there's like a weird time thing happening. So immediately I wanted to believe, oh, there's a time travel thing happening. I don't think that's the case. And, and the reason why is because they keep making references to history repeating itself. Uh, that's happened many times throughout the series, but a few recent examples. Uh, Zeke, the Beast Titan, he says uh, a few episodes ago when Erwin was leading the suicide charge against him. The Beast Titan makes it sound like that's happened before. He says, all right, here we go again. There's going to be another suicide run. Everyone's going to die. Even just now, the owl says, you're going to repeat the same history, the same mistakes over and over. So I think there's something here about history repeating itself. And maybe in the past, there were people named Mikasa and Armin who played similar roles as the Mikasa and Armin we know today. And maybe those memories survive subconsciously and inspire people to name their children after those characters from the past. Maybe Grisha named his son Aaron. Maybe he, you know, I don't know how this memory thing works when you turn into a Titan. Maybe he doesn't even remember that the owl was named Aaron because he even, he only just learned that name. And he says here he might forget everything that happens before he turned in just before turning into a Titan. So the name Aaron may have come to him subconsciously. So I'm not ruling out the possibility that this is a time travel thing because it definitely seemed like that was a very specific message to Aaron, who is currently reliving these memories. But my bet right now is that it's some kind of a cyclical history repeating itself thing. Sounds more likely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that closes out the episode. And I have to say, it's pretty incredible that they're giving us so many answers over the last few episodes. Uh, but they still managed to find a way to end on, a, on another note of like, whoa, whoa, what? So they're doing a great job. Uh, and then I'll say I complained a little bit last episode that they were going through things a little bit too quickly. It was kind of hard to keep up with the information download. I still felt a little bit of that this episode, but it definitely wasn't quite as bad. The pacing felt a little bit more on point. 
Um, but overall, I mean, still very much enjoyed this episode. It's not hitting the emotional highs from two or three episodes ago where you had the suicide run, where you had the debate over who to save, Irwin or Armin. But you can't always be at that level of intensity. You need episodes like this. So good episode, not one of the best, but definitely a pretty, you know, really good episode. How about you? Any closing thoughts? No, I thought it was a very good episode as well. And I I can't wait for some answers on this. The the whole Armin Mikasa history repeating itself. Right. If we get (laughs) answers, because there is only one episode left this season. And well, well, it seems like uh, they might be getting ready for uh, to build up something that could last a whole nother season. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. So they, so if they answer that question, I'm sure they're going to ask another question where we're going to be waiting till next season to find out what happens next. Uh, And I'll also say, I feel like every previous episode for the last five episodes, maybe we knew what was going to happen next. Sort of like before the last episode, we had a feeling, okay, the next episode, we're going to dive into Grisha's history. We're going to get some answers at the end of this one. I really don't know what's going to happen next. There isn't any clear next step. Yeah. I know I want another awesome battle, but I don't know who they would fight this time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Unless there's a surprise, Beast Titan attack. Oh, who knows? Yeah, you know he'll be a lot more careful this time around. Right, right. Or maybe uh, Hanj gets it gets from Aaron um, the truth about how Historia might be the key. You know, maybe if they turn her into a Titan, and that that could be a way for Aaron to use his power. And then we get an internal struggle over Aaron wanting to protect um, Historia. You know, who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Ho- hopefully it's not too political. Yeah, I know. <laughs> those are We don't love those episodes when it turns into all politics. Uh, nah. <laughs> Maybe we'll enjoy it more now, though, because I feel like we've got a pretty good handle on who's who. You know, I've done the research, so I kind of <laughs> understand the conflicts. You have the tax and the string. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, if I turn this laptop, you'll see pictures <laughs> all taped up on my, uh, on my wall. It looks like a beautiful mind. <laughs> All right, well, needless to say, we're both excited for the finale next week. Uh, and thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you get notifications whenever we release more videos like this one. Thanks for watching. And we're back. So, Gil, you and I were... Right after we finished recording, we had an interesting conversation. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. We were uh, we were starting to think, were there any signs about things to come in earlier seasons? Right. And then you recalled something. Right. We were actually, we were sort of complaining, saying that it feels like some of what we're seeing, you know, were they just making it up as they went along? Were there any actual signs earlier in the series? And then suddenly I remembered something from episode one on season one, season one, one, episode one. And not only that, less than five minutes into the episode. Mm -hmm. So on the topic of there being some kind of time travel element to the show where you can have memories of future events that triggered a memory for me back in episode one, three minutes 45 seconds into the episode, we see a smattering of images. Uh, We see what looks like a Titan and some blood splatter. You see, I think, Aaron get lifted up. You see some empty land, which then flashes to a bunch of Titans attacking. You see a Titan get slashed. You see a uniform sitting by a fireplace. You see a bedroom with some dolls, including what looks like a Winnie the Pooh doll. You see a bunch of dead scouts in the woods. You see someone's eyeball. I think Aaron's with a B on it. But then most important of all, you see Aaron's mom getting eaten by a Titan. And then Aaron wakes up. So all of that was part of some dream that Aaron was having. And that all happened before Aaron's mom got eaten by a Titan. 
And I remember back when we watched episode one, we were like, oh, so does Aaron have some weird thing where he just gets glimpses of the future? And then as episodes go by, we just started to assume, oh, sort of half forgot about it, half assumed that the writers maybe wanted to do something with that, but changed their minds. Or maybe it was just some artistic element that didn't really mean anything. Right. Right. Where they, but it was just weird because they used actual footage of his mom getting eaten. It was the same clip later in the episode as in this part of the episode. Uh, right after Aaron wakes up, he sees Mikasa standing over him. He says, huh? Mikasa? And then she says, let's head back. Aaron asks, what am I doing here? Mikasa says, you're so out of it. Were you sound asleep? Aaron replies, no, it's just, I feel like I had a really long dream. What was it about? I can't remember. Mikasa says, Aaron, why are you crying? And then it cuts. So that, in looking at this now, now it seems to me for sure there's some element where when you have the power of the Titan, somehow you can get some glimpses into the future. Maybe it's only if you have the power of the founding Titan, uh, but that actually wouldn't make sense because the owl didn't have that. Right. But uh, so I guess I'm, I am changing my theory <laughs> <laughs> from the history repeating itself to there is some kind of time travel element. Uh, maybe you can access memories from future Titans or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Anything to add to that theory, or do we to be encapsulated there? Well, I don't know how much we want to <laughs> theorize right now, but if it's a memory from a future Titan that inhabits his Titan, I, I'm trying to figure out who it might be. Maybe Mikasa eats Eren <laughs> in the future, and then he is remembering her. Her future memory, I don't know. But it, I'm very intrigued, though. <laughs> I got. I need to get my whiteboard back out because I. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure all of this will be answered next, next episode. episode. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if uh, if the final episode of the series will flash back to this moment in episode one, where he wakes up, because he said he had a really long dream. That long dream was the series Attack on Titan. And then he's going to return <laughs> to this moment, and, and then he gets to relive the whole thing. But this time, he has the power of all the knowledge of the future events of the series. Maybe. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <laughs> anyway, I feel like it was important for us to come back and say that before one of the commenters uh, piece it together before we do. 